back with Cultivating the Culture. It's your boy Pablo. You know, we're here with a special guest, but before he introduces his name, you know what I'm saying? I just gotta say, brother, the crew and I, yeah, we love your work. Appreciate it, bro. Speak. Appreciate it, bro. It's love. What's down? That's love. What's word, down? word, word. So Mark we, John Jeffries, man. Y'all know the vibes. Yeah. How was it like growing up in New York as a kid? It was cool, man. Like, I'm from the Bronx, you know, so like, the Bronx got its own culture. Was Yankee games in the Yankee Stadium, going to the mall, movie theater, you know, so it was cool. It, it was like I, I got to go and experience a lot and then come home and like tell my friends that I was growing up with, like the stuff that I saw in LA or right. on the road shooting, right. so it was dope. How was it growing up as an actor? Dang, hey, that was, honestly, I never appreciated it wow. because it was always, it was normal to me. You know, like I was raised doing it. So for me, that was my lifestyle. There was nothing else. I think if I if I had like got into acting when I was like 10, 11, the appreciation would have been different. But that's literally like all I know. What's down? You know, what's so down, what's down? It, was, it, was, it was cool though. Okay, yeah, okay, it was okay. cool though. That's what's yeah. up. The first movie was Losing Isaiah. Tell yeah. us about that. Man, that was crazy. Um, So I don't remember a lot. If I did, I'd be capping. Right, 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 like, yeah, right, right. right. But it, it's just crazy how a movie that I did and that I don't remember impacted so many people, you know. But I met Samuel Jackson on that set, Cuba Gooding Jr., um, Halle. I remember Halle bought me this. Halle Berry and Jessica Lane bought me these gifts, right? Halle Berry bought me like these, these like Snap Connect Four type blocks, right. and Jessica Lane bought me this Flat Flintstone watch with some chocolates. And I hid the chocolates in my closet because my parents ain't want me eat candy like that. Man, I had them chocolates in my closet for like six, seven months. Like, I remember that. Okay. Going in the closet, taking a piece of the nugget. My mom would be like, why your stomach messed up? I was like, I don't know, mama. I was like four, bro. <laughs> four years old, word. So, man, word. is Holly Berry really fine like that in person? Oh, come on. You know the answer to that question. I'm coming for you. You know the answer to that I'm question. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming for you. And she still look good. Shoot, Holly, like... 50 now, something like that? Word. Yeah, she still got it, bro. Yeah, that's my cougar I need. Yeah. I take that back. I take that back. Lay it long. Lay it long. Lay it long. Lay it long. Different, bro. Word. That's a fact. Nia, I hope you watching this. Because your boy won't you. Uh -huh. And I ain't talking about him. Uh-huh. <laughs> Word. Word. What projects you got coming up? I'm working on Fells High, a uh, movie I'm producing, starring Amari Hardwick. My boy Kevin J. Nelson directed, wrote it, produced it. City on the Hill, season three, hopefully. Um, just signed on to a project called Cali Dreams. Okay. Another one called Aurora. Uh, Shoe one now called 13th and Pine. Yes, sir. What you see some of my else from Hell yeah, in the States yeah. Barrel. You yeah. know, yeah. the barrel. Most I'm down. from New York, now city of the five barrels. Most but now down. I got six in the catalog. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh, come at all uh, actress. Yeah. Who you looking at? Ooh. Like who fun? Nah, like oh, oh like talent wise. Oh, talent wise. <laughs> Dang, I was about to say, ooh. Uh, we gonna get back to that question. Talent too. wise, I gotta go with Dominique Fishback. Okay. Yeah, she she cold, bro. Shorty from uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She coming up. She got chops. She got chops. She remind me of like a young, like that Viola Davis style, or just like who else? I'll say between. Or like a young Taraji, you know what I'm saying? Like tough. just soulful, just got like. That's tough. Yeah, she cold. You gotta stand on that now. Yeah, she cold. You gotta stand she on cold. that. She cold. I wanna do a movie with her. Okay. Yeah, I wanna do a movie with her. So back to the fine part. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Wait, 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 um, wait, wait, wait. I don't wanna get you in trouble now. You ain't gonna get me in trouble. Oh, I ain't gonna, okay. I ain't getting in trouble. Okay. Uh, so first, I'm gonna say this. Sorry to all my homies. Sorry, Vic. You know, I just gotta say the truth. Karuchi, <laughs> you know, if you're watching this, holla at me. All right, last time I saw you, you was acting real shy. You better get at Kinda my light skinned you, dish. You better get at my boy. You know, a little bit light skinned dish. Holla at me. Uh, let me see, who else? Let me see, who else? Dad, you, got, too, yeah, Dad, Dad, you, got, mm, you got me in my bag now. Spider-Man, not Zendaya. But the shorty, remember the new Spider-Man? I ain't watch it. You ain't watch it? Bruh, I'm about to tag. I don't even know her name. You can put me uh, on. 
So yeah, if you watching this, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you can hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Do I don't know what's her name. Is that Laura? Yeah, Laura Harrier. I don't know how old she is, but she nice. If you legal, Laura, you the one and older. You nice, you know. And and we ain't thirsty over here. Nah. I normally don't say that, nah. but you got it, sweetheart. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Oh, Suicide Shawty. Squad. Yes. yes. Yeah. But not playing Harley. Like playing Harley, she look a little scary. Yeah, but like in do. focus with Will. Yeah. Dog, I watched that movie twice because of her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picky. I like I like a little exotic look in my life. I'm trying to think who else. That's a tough one. I don't really do celebrity chicks like that. That's what it is. Most definitely. I like the regular Jones. Kyla Pratt. You know, she she a back in the day thing, but Kyla Pratt from one on one. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. She nice. Okay. She nice. Uh who else? Shorty that I was in Haunted Mansion with. Oh yeah, Ari yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah. She grew up, you I know. Recently, just seen a little picture of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she grew up to be nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to Ari. Most um, definitely. Oh, she a singer. I forget her name. She a Jamaican singer. Uh, Normani. But that's my short list. For sure. That's my short list. I heard you. Uh, met you just mentioned uh, Honey. Honey mm -hmm. mentioned. Yeah. How was it like working with Eddie? Oh, that was about Eddie, man. That was dope. Eddie a good dude, man. Took me under his wing, like, became friends with his kids, you know, like, lived with them for pretty much, yeah, for two years. Uh, his, Miles was like my best friend growing up. Mm -hmm. Eddie taught me a lot, critiqued my comedy, came out to my comedy shows, introduced me to other legends, you know, got some of them to take me under their wing. So I don't got nothing but positive things to say about that man, bro. So basically that was your mentor? Yeah, okay. yeah. Are you Eddie, still your mentor? Nah, not anymore. Was. He taught me. I, I honestly feel like Eddie is responsible largely for who I became as a performer. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he didn't teach me acting. He taught me life as an actor. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he fine-tuned my mentality and taught me how to, he gave me the, the Mamba mentality in a sense. For sure, for sure. You know, like he taught me, like nah, you gotta work for everything. You gotta outwork people, forget your talent. You gotta put in that work and, and make sure that you always know that it's what you bring to the table that's the reason why you're gonna get hired and not who you know or who you could call, it's none of that. Right. You know, it's all about the effort you're willing to put in and don't ever feel like you you too big to give us a, a real effort. You know what sure, I'm saying? Sure. So like that always stuck with me, bro. Sure. It always stuck with me because a lot of a lot of people in Hollywood, bro, they got it. They got the game twisted like and it became real political, too. You know, so Can like, you talk about this. I could talk about it to a degree. Okay, yeah. So uh huh. Turn it notch up a little bit. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of circles, favoritism. you know what I'm saying? It, favoritism in a sense. So I got, if you my man, right. he my man, he my man, he my man, I'm doing a project, we all on. I got nothing wrong, I have no problem with that. You know, that's just the way things work. Thanks. Your friends, if your friends are talented, they supposed to be the ones to get the Thanks. job, you Thanks. know? So I don't have no problem with that. Thanks. What I have a problem with is when people try to act like your friend, they're your friend so they can get the job. And it's a lot of that, you know? So when you a person that, if you don't, I'm just a dude, I don't, if I don't naturally connect with you, if I don't vibe with you, I'm not gonna fake anything. Right. You know, and sometimes that can, that can hurt your chance at getting certain roles. Cause it's just certain things that you supposed to do. You know, like, you're supposed to go to a party if such and such invites you. But I'm the type right. of dude that it's like, bro, I don't like him. I ain't going to that party. But now that you mention that, mm -hmm. I can tell because you really supposed to be bigger than Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. Like, yeah. Since a jig, yeah. boy. Yeah. Since a jig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. You know, but it is what it is. You know, It is what it is. I focus on, I just focus on the talent, bro. You know, work out my crap every day. And I'm going to get mine. So, you know, so I ain't worried about that. Right. Yep. So, uh, what made you open up that school? Crazy story. I tried to go to college, mm -hmm. and every time I was like signed up for a semester, I would book a movie. Right. So, after like the third try, I worked with a professor at, I think he worked at Juilliard, 
And he pretty much was like, why are you going to go to school? You're going to pay money to do what 95% of our student body is right. trying to like get to and you already been doing it since you were younger. That doesn't make sense. Like just fine tune your craft. So then when I wasn't able to go to school for acting, I'm like, you know what? Maybe early childhood education. Right. So I, I applied, booked a movie. And then my pops, he was pretty much like, you want to be a teacher? Like, and you love acting. Why don't you teach acting? And I was like, Ma, I thought I got my smarts from you, but dad sounded kind of <laughs> like a genius right now. You know what I'm right. saying? And, um, I looked in a few schools and it was one in New York. I'm not going to say no names, sure. but I looked at it and they was, they wanted to hire me, you know, to like be a special coach for some of their guests, kind of like NYU do okay. for some of their students. And, um, bro, I looked at them prices right. and I was like, dang, people that look like me can't afford this. You know, people that come from the same place I come from, they can't afford this. All right. And it was just like, I feel like everybody should have a chance to be taught by somebody that knows. You know, like, regardless of your upbringing, we born in the situations that we don't have any control over. Right. And if everybody that has always gives back to the same group, then those people that are born in the situations that they had no control over kind of don't have a chance, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? So my pops and my agent was like, well, why don't you just open your own school? So that's what I did. So, you sure. know, eight years later, I got students. One of my students is the lead on the new BMF with 50. Yeah, other students in different movies, on shows, Law & Order, Wu-Tang, like my, my boy that plays Giza, Janelle Young on Wu-Tang, okay, yeah. that's my student too, you know what I'm saying? So you just, you gotta get back, bro. Like information is free and a lot of people they get it and they keep it for themselves. But when you learn from somebody, you're supposed to pass that on, sure. you know? So like- That's real. Yeah. A lot of people don't do that. It's crazy. Yeah, unfortunately. Right. Unfortunately, but I, I just feel like if you got a problem with helping somebody, that means you're not securing your own talent. Right. You know, so basically, yeah, basically, that means you basically. afraid that man gonna take your I spot. But if you. you if you talented, there's a spot for everybody. You know what right. I'm saying? Like you should know that what's your what's for you is what's for you. What's for you is what's for you. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm up for a role, bro, I've been on auditions. I see my students at auditions, and I've been like, Yo, bro, are you perfect for this? Look, coach them on the joint right there in the audition, and we going up for the same role, and they walk in and they book it. You know what I'm saying? Because what's for me is always going to be for me. That's love. You know what I'm saying? That's but it's love. like, what, what good am I doing? How I'm trying to teach actors and then stepping on their necks in the next breath. I'm trying to teach you to be better, but when I see you in a competitive work vibe, you know, I'm trying to step on your neck or I act like I don't know you. Nah, bro, if, if I'm your teacher, if I'm helping you, that's what we're going to do. That's tough. So, yeah. So, did you have it hard growing up? Cause I know people give give you an outlook like, oh, you was an actor since you was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, explain these folks your lifestyle. I'm not gonna say I had it hard, right? Just because it's like, I had so many luxuries that the average adult don't have, right. you know what I'm saying? But because my family is my family, and I'm talking about aunts, uncles, cousins, my mom's side, my pop's side, like I still lived in the Bronx. We had cribs and, California and Pennsylvania, but my pops kept me in the Bronx because he wanted to keep me grounded. Right. So until I was like a certain age, I was still in the hood, you know what I'm saying? So I would say I personally didn't have it hard based on my lifestyle, but we all go through turmoil, right. you know what I'm saying? And we all go through situations that is difficult for us based on what we used to, you know? like. If your life has been, if my life has been nothing but shooting movies and traveling and having fun and making friends, and then I go through a period of time where like my family is distant, you know, they got mm -hmm. negative things to say, or I got friends that's turning their back on me, betraying me, and I don't understand like why. That's, you know, it's hard to go through. But I would say the, the hardest thing to go through growing up, honestly, bro, was just like going, meeting all these people, seeing how big the world was, seeing how much there was to offer, and coming home to people that like, really felt like they didn't have a chance in life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that was the hardest thing for me. Going somewhere, coming home, wanting to tell my boy about how I was just with Martin and Will Smith, and this dude is like, yo bro, you got hot water at your crib, like your microwave work, you lend me a dollar for some oodles and noodles. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, my struggle was more so through the people I was around. Just cause it's like, 
if you my man, I love you, bro. I rock with you. So how how am I going to change our situation? You know, and that was a struggle. Right. You know, and then certain people, you try to help them and you can't, but you at least got to try. You got to try. You got to try. Got to try. You know, so just a lot of that growing up. Yeah. All right, so what, like, that you speak on that, what would you tell a kid or adults mm -hmm. that's losing faith in whatever they're doing, what you going to tell them to keep going? Um, first thing is this, right? I'm going to look at y'all when I say this. Failure is part of success. You can't be successful without failure. It don't work. You know how many games LeBron James lost, how many games Kobe Bryant lost, how many failed scripts Ava, Ava DuVernay probably looked at or wrote, or how many auditions Denzel Washington didn't book before he became Denzel. You know what I'm saying? Like, failure is a part of the journey. And when you start looking at your situation and you're like, you know, maybe this is not for me, maybe I'm giving up. You just got to re-look at, you re-evaluate re the way you're looking at things or re-evaluate what you're doing. A lot of times we don't get anywhere because we think that what we're doing is right. You know, we think we're going about it the right way. But say right now that me as an actor, I know that you cannot become an actor for real, for real, without representation, without management, without an agent. And there's somebody that's watching this at home right now, and you watch movies, you put yourself on tape, you you know, your family, your friends, you even took classes and they said you was dope, and you just DMing all of these different like filmmakers on Instagram, sending them your audition tapes, and nothing is happening for you, and you like, man, maybe not acting not for me. Well, yeah, you're doing the right thing. You're putting work in, but you're putting your efforts in the wrong place. You know what I'm saying? So one of the biggest things is you gotta make sure that you're working towards the right goal. And that's something you gotta understand. Another thing, stop looking for mentors that's way bigger than where you are right now. Sometimes we look for mentors and it's like, you not even you haven't even started as a performer yet and you DMing Michael B. Jordan or somebody like me or, or somebody like that you see on a TV show and you asking them to be your mentor. Nine times out of 10, them people are mentors to people they met long before you, you know? Hit a dude up that you see that's already an actor that just got his headshots done on the gram. Put hashtag actor, hashtag actress, hashtag set life in on IG and look for up and coming filmmakers or actors that's working on short films and independence. Reach out to them, ask them where they, how they got where, where they at right now. You know, you sometimes you gotta take the small steps and those lead to the bigger ones. Whenever you got a big goal that's far out, Man, you, that could take 10, 20 years to get there and you're gonna feel unfulfilled and unaccomplished if you spend two years working hard towards something. But if you set smaller goals and you attack those year by year, then before you know it, that 10 years is up, you got so much to show for it, you got so many goals you done accomplished, and now you're a household name. And you know, and that's, that's really how it goes. So before you start getting all you know, sad and feeling like you're alone or getting worn down, feeling like maybe I need to give up. Nah, you just need to educate yourself and go about doing it the right way. Hey, so can we talk about this movie that you're doing in Statesboro, Georgia? Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay, we so- We can talk about it. So how you land that position and uh, what you think about the script? Okay, so it's a movie called 13th and Pine, right? right? And uh, I met the director in Jacksonville. He brought me out for like, some event that he was having for a non-for-profit, cool dude, you know, we chopped it up. And I'm just the type of dude, if I meet you and I act like your friend and we off on friendly vibes, if that's the vibe I give you, I'm gonna be your friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you hit me up about something, I'm gonna treat you like I would treat a friend. So he hit me up about this project, man, about a month and a half ago, told me he wanted to do it, he wanted to go all in. And I was like, all right, cool, just let me know. And he right. gave me a date, I was like, he gave me a span of time. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna put that time on hold for you. When you are ready to lock it in, let me know once the dates are set and I'm there. I didn't even read the script until I was on the flight here. Right. I didn't even, I never read the script. I didn't even read the script. It was just like one of them things where if I rock with somebody and they say they need me, you know, I'm right. there. Right. So fortunately the script was dope. You know, but I'm not gonna lie, the best thing about the shoot, I done, bro, I shot a lot of places. I received love a lot of places I go, but the love down here in Statesboro, bro, different. That's real, man. Different, bro, That's real. different. Like, That's real. I, I'm, I'm comfortable here, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like one of those things where people show you love, but at the same time, they treat you like a person. Okay. And I, you, you go certain places and you don't get that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you either get people that do too much 
or you just get people that they show love, but you could feel the hate. You know what I'm saying? So um, the script was cool. Y'all gonna see a, another familiar face in it other than me. I'm not gonna spoil it for y'all. For sure. But I'ma just let you know the boy talented, all right? <laughs> the first time I saw the boy perform the scene, I was like, yo, bro, you natural. You never acted before? What you been in? He was nothing. <laughs> I'm like, what, dog? What you did is not easy. Like, you was just naturally present, able to perform. I ain't gonna say no names or nothing like that, you know, but, oh, my wrist. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but this project gonna be smooth, bro. Well, it's it's gonna be smooth. Down. Word. So, Word. you said Eddie wasn't your mentor no more. Mm -hmm. So, who your mentor is? And why? Uh, Amari Hardwick now. Ghost. Yeah, Ghost from Power. That's dope. Um, And the same kind of thing, right? Like, I feel like certain people, they just teach you how to transition. You know, like, they teach you how to take that next step. And a lot of times people think mentors are people that like make you better by teaching you more about your craft. But that's not what, a, that's to me, that's not what a mentor really is. You know what I'm saying? Like you could teach me more about my craft, but that don't make me better right. as a person. You know what I'm saying? Like what comes first is who I am. What comes next is how good I am. And I feel like Amari made me better as a person and that made me better as an actor. You know, like he just taught me something. He he he's the first actor that kind of took me under his wing, but I'm still close enough in age to be his friend. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like we got a big brother, little brother dynamic, but at the same token, he just like me. If he rock with you and he say like that he if he act like your friend, he coming through like he's your friend. You know what I'm saying? And he was the first person that I kind of felt that and it didn't feel phony on a big level since like the Eddies and all of them. Well, so, yeah, definitely Amari right now, bro. I got to talk about one of my favorites, mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence. Okay. You got to yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to talk to yeah. him about my boy, man. Martin, Martin is a cool dude, bro. He's he chill. Martin is just chill. Like a lot of right. people, they hear all of the gossip about him and stuff like that and they just they don't realize like we still actors at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? My first my first experience with Martin was when I was like five. After I did four or five, after I did Losing Isaiah, they brought me, my mom, and my pops to the Paramount lot and they was getting ready to do Bad Boys. And they introduced me to Martin, Will, they signed a Bad Boys hat for me, took pics with me, all of that good stuff. Then like years later, I went to I was with the Murphys. And we went to some crib, we was, they was like, yo, we're gonna go watch a movie at such and such house, but they said his wife's name. So I didn't know whose house I was at, right? When we get to the house, bro, it's like a full line of candy. Every candy you could think about, like Sour Patch Kids, Snickers, Reese's Pieces, Swedish Fish, like all the movie theater candy. They got the popcorn machine, soda machines, a staff like giving us the candy. Yo, we go to the movie theater, we sit there watching the candy, all of that. I come out and Miss Murphy is in there. She talking to somebody like, and I hear the voice, but his back is to me and all of that. And um, we go down and we like, yeah, hey, Miss Murphy, you know, and I got my bucket of candy. And then he get up, he like, Yo, bro, this little nigga, yeah, hey, come here, man. Yo, yo, you eating all the damn candy, man. Where you, yo, where you going with all this candy? I'm like, I like candy. He like, all right, I got you. So then my pops came to pick me up. Mario came up to my pops and he handed him something. My father was like this, he was like, what's this? He was like, that's your bill. That little nigga can eat, eating all the damn candy, right? So then I went to Martin's house another time and I told him like, I was like, I'm gonna work with you one day. And he was like, all right, we're gonna see, make it happen. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, four years later, yeah, like three, four years later, Big Mama South Street. Martin coming up on set, he got two shorties walking with him, holding umbrellas and all of that. He walking with his shades on and he woke up and I'm like, yo, I told you, I told you. I told you, he turned around, he like, oh, you told me, yeah, you here, he like, yeah, where my money for my candy, they be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but that was just like a full circle moment, you know, just because you grow up watching certain people, you know what I'm saying, like, and then you meet them, and then it's like, you able to 
to really make certain things come true, you know? And that, and that was like the first time, not nah, Eddie was the first time, but Martin was like the second time that it was somebody that I told myself I want to work with them, right. you know? And, and it happened, you know? So Denzel is my next. Haven't seen you in a minute, but it's coming soon. And you directing now. Mm-hmm. Word. And you directing now. Look me up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, man, appreciate you, my of brother. Of course, my brother. Hey. Yo. It's all love now. Here for Always. Real, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate, appreciate that. Appreciate all the opportunities that you told me. For sure, man. Man, bro, for for sure, real. man. I told you, when you come to New York, yo, he gonna come to New York. We gonna do this again when he pull up in New York. You know, I gotta put him on to the Big Apple. You. Yeah. Uh-huh. You. Yeah. And get what? We out of here. Yes.